Howdy, how y'all doing? This is George and Phyllis Rambler. Hope you guys are having a great day. Today we're in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We're trying to have a fun whole day, excursions, walking around the town and seeing what's there. So do me a favor, come join us. Heading off the Caribbean Princess, we had five must-dos. Well, at least what we want to accomplish here in San Juan without paying a buttload of money for excursions. Yes, do San Juan on the cheap. In this vlog, we're going to go ahead and do the first two of our must-dos, followed up with the second video with the other three. On our list, the first activity or the must-do to walk to the Fiente Reyesis or the Reyes' Fountain at the Paseo de la Princea. And second, and the most important, was to walk to the Castillo San Felipe de Moro. It's a fort built in the 1500s. You know, it's a NASA historical site. So our boat is out. Walk down. When you exit the port terminal, you might want to head down a little bit, look at your ship, take some of those great photographs, but to head off to the Reyes Fountain, you want to head to the left. Don't forget to take some time to get those selfies, that Instagram moment. Don't do that Disney rush, you know, where the rope drop hits and you run like heck. Yeah. Take your time and enjoy the atmosphere that Puerto Rico has to give you. San Juan has a lot of street side vendors. They'd appreciate your business. Since I did not pay for a ship excursion here in San Juan, I have a little bit of extra money to buy some trinkets and certainly some souvenirs. At the end of the port, as you leave walking to the Raices Fountain, you hit this Boricua sign, what represents a Puerto Rican or a person of Puerto Rican descent. So for this day, this might be a wonderful photo moment. We can become a Puerto Rican for the day and respect the culture that this island has. Who cares, come on. Anytime I walk by an ATM machine, I always think about that commercial. ATM fix everything. So if you need some money, especially maybe to rent these scooters to get you all the way to the Raices Fountain and certainly up to that fortress, yeah, there's a place to get money right there. Travel tip. What about those pigeons? What do you think they want? They want pigeon food. Tip, bring pigeon food. Bring pigeon food because there's nobody here yet. <laughs> Walking through the Plaza de Darcina, you're going to see this tower, and that's going to be the beginning of the Paseo de las Pasisa. You know, down the street there, you're going to find the Raisisa Fountain. Just follow the wall. Where are we? We're lost. <laughs> oh no, now we know where we're at. Right here. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Walking down to Paseo, you know, following the wall, you're going to find these wonderful alcoves that's going to have some art, some floor, some fauna, and some history that you need to stop and enjoy. Again, just don't rush this trip. It's a less than a 10 minute walk to the fountain. You can take a few more minutes to see some culture. On the map, this is the dedicated picnic area. So bring some food, a drink, Sit down and relax and listen to that fountain. Take a few minutes and encapsulate your trip here. Take some photos. You can take them home, put them in a scrapbook, or even put them in a vlog like this. It's how to keep our memories alive. Because when we get older, our memories kind of just disappear. Here I am on my balcony. Go cut the kid off. 
Again, just a few minutes away from the port, there's this wonderful playground. Yeah, people are waiting in line to get in. They won't let me in, maybe because of my age. But certainly, you can let your kids run around and get a lot of that built up energy out of them. As we walk towards that Raices fountain, you know, it is located at the far end of the Paseo de las Princesa. Let's go to a female figure at the island's portal from which incoming ships can be sighted. To the left of what would be called the main spot on board, the family, the center of any social group. Oh, on that side, yeah. To the right, the native is borrow, deeply rooted in the land with his rhythm. Just don't admire this beautiful fountain. Take a few minutes and read about the history and what each one of these figures represents. The Riasis Fountain was unveiled on May 30th, 1992 to commemorate the 500th anniversary of the discovery of America. And it also inaugurated the La Princesa Promenade. The beautiful thing about this particular fountain, as you look at those human figures, they represent one thing, the island's Titano, the Arawak people who were the indigenous people of the Caribbean and Florida. They also represent Spanish and the African heritage this island has. But some sad things about this fountain, vandalism has taken its toll. If you notice around this fountain, there's some cement pillars that used to be surrounded by this beautiful brass chain. That now is long gone. Probably some type of souvenir or maybe trade in to get a little bit of bucks at the junk store. Leaving the fountain and heading up to the fortress, we're going to go ahead and follow the Morala de la Ciudad, the city wall. Follow the sea till you get to the Porta de San Juan, the San Juan Gate. This time I wish you knew I speak Spanish. Infrastructure. Infrastructure. Yeah. And they're doing some infrastructure here. Infrastructure repairs construction. Pretty artwork. As you're going through San Juan, take a few minutes to look at the sculpture and the sculptural work. This is absolutely amazing in my opinion. Some good old iron work. Now the true representation of this, I'm not quite sure, but I am an iron worker and I tell you, this is just awesome. Walking along the city wall and looking over the Bahia de San Juan or the San Juan Bay, you get this great tranquil feeling and this wonderful peacefulness of how beautiful this world is. On this trail you feel very safe. We saw several security guards or police going up and down this trail and it was good to know that this was being patrolled. You fish swimming around in there. Yeah, right over there with some fish. The San Juan City walls are masonry walls that surround the western end of the inlet of San Juan, site of old San Juan district. Now, these are defensive wall systems built between 16th and the 20th century to protect the city and the Bay of San Juan. Yep. So we're walking along the shoreline here in San Juan. You can see San Juan Gate right here. And uh, 
what a wonderful view of seeing some good old architecture. These fort architecture. If you look in here, you're looking at the San Juan Gate or Puerta de San Juan. Now, it is one of the most colorful and known of all the entrances to the wall city, and it has stood tall for centuries. The gate is 16 feet tall and 20 feet thick, and well, leads to the romantic Boseo La Presencia. Our trek to El Moro, you know, the fort, has led us to the top of the wall and to the beautiful old town San Juan. There is so much to see here, but our goal is to get to the fort as it opens. And it opens at 9.30, so we still have a lot of adventuring to do. You almost think you're there, but then you need to walk up the hill to it. There we go. There's our free excursion. If you have a National Park Pass, how free is it? You have to walk there. <laughs> is that right? It wasn't a bad walk. It wasn't a bad walk. It about a half hour. I'm sweating like crazy. But the heat, we're sweating like crazy. Here we got a little breeze, that'll be nice. Oh, the breeze is nice. That's what we've been waiting for, a nice sea breeze. Okay, let's go walk up to it. It is a beautiful walk though. Why here? Why did the Spanish want to colonize Puerto Rico? Well, did you feel those little breezes? Yeah, the trade winds blew sailing ships from Europe with the help of the ocean currents right to Puerto Rico. So why fortify Puerto Rico? Well, because it was the first major island with water, shelter, and supplies that sailing ships came to en route the Americas from Europe via the African west coast. Now why this small inlet? Because this deep bay was an excellent port and ready to defend. So let's go see El Moro the defense of this bay. Castillo de Felipe del Moro. Where are y'all from? Atlanta. Castillo de San Felipe del Moro historical site opened at 9.30. We got there about 9ish. It didn't take us quite as long to get from the seaport up to this fort. So we got a chance to walk around and wait in line. Because I knew this was a national park, or at least in the national park system, I brought my America the Beautiful, the National Park and Federal Recreational Land Pass, the annual pass. It works here. And because of that, we had a special line. I got to walk right through. As a matter of fact, no one even checked my pass. Cost to me and Terry, free. This being our most important thing to do in San Juan, Puerto Rico, we're gonna spend about an hour, hour and a half in Castillo San Felipe del Moro, this 15th century fortress, because we have other things planned. So that'll be a good representation of this fort. Probably we could see it all in this hour and a half. So let's go do it. This is San Felipe del Moro right here. San Cristobal, which is the other one. This is all of San Juan, so we're just up in here. The map that we received here at this national site wasn't too good on each individual, you know, fort. Here, El Moro, or even Castillo San Cristobal. It was better just walk around and read the signs and enjoy the view than it was to sit there and try to learn from a map because this map really didn't do much help for the individual fort tours. Jason. 
Those are ram rods right here. And that would fire out somewhere to that island. <laughs> Anything that's passing in through that area. This one right here sure would protect you. 16 pounder. Of course, it's going to go fire out there and protect the uh, coastline. You get to see a lot of the armory, the storerooms, and the gunpowder magazines. But that's kind of fun to see. Oh, there's those 16 pounders. Looks like they're going to 16 pounds. Those are not balls, those are like Can't missiles. missiles. Explode and throw out. Well, these are because you can see that they got a fuse on them, so they're probably full of gunpowder as it goes out, explodes into pieces. So these look like they might. Look how they got the holes. Oh, they, they might do. Like yeah. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> the crowds are coming. I wouldn't go there if you locked the door on me. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Must be a reason for they can climb up here to do something. To shoot. They can right here with their gun. I guess it is right about the same right height. Yeah, I wonder when this is. This is where the cannons are. Yeah. Are right here. This could be a lookout. I got the gun. You could pick people off. Yeah. I'm not gonna go ahead and do a full walkthrough of El Moro. I know I've taken enough video to do a video alone just on this fort. And certainly it could be a vlog all by itself. But that isn't the goal of this video. It's to show you some of our must do's. And this was our number two must do. We wanted to visit this particular spot. So we spent a while here doing it. So we'll do a little bit of a walkthrough here to show you. I'll give you a little bit of a, of a treat or maybe a appetizer of what this fort can be to you if you came here but certainly this was very enjoyable but we didn't spend the whole day here so we're going to do another video another vlog coming up and it's going to be part two of san juan and we're going to do some fun things downtown so let's go and do this walkthrough and then head off to part two san juan a little bit weathered out it looks like it's been on the bottom of the ocean it does so tell me about this site right here what did, you, what did you find out about this so it was interesting that they also had trash cans back in the 1500s <laughs> all we yeah. had to do was put a modern top on it there it goes or it could be a disney thing where they wanted to blend into it around yes the triangular staircase here in the fort is very unique. This staircase is strategically located to provide soldiers quick access between the levels of the fortification. It is the access we're going to use to get to the lower levels of this fortification. It's kind of fun to walk and maybe a little scary. It's pretty steep. It is. I'm walking very carefully because the way I am, Triangular staircase. Yep. Kind of leads down. We get this level right here. Oh. oh, this seems narrow. Oh, what do we get? Well, there's a hole to drain water. Oh, is that what it is? A firing shot? No, but you probably could sit here and look out too. With this out of the sun and not the glare of the... Well, when you cool down, just step here because the wind's blowing right through there and it feels good. It does. Go down there if you want. Yeah, it's just more little holes in the wall. Yeah. Yeah, look all the little corridors that have been walking. They're all sort of like five feet. Oh, don't worry. Have we not been up there? Go ahead, John. It's a good excuse for me. Go up. Go down. Go up. I have to grab it. What? Everything that goes up must come down. 
Time to go up my calves. Oh, up, up, up. Yeah, we can just slide. You could sell that as an attraction. Stop at the chapel to make sure you give a prayer that you can make it back to the ship on time. You certainly don't want to be one of those pier runners, do you? Don't forget to bring your passport to your national park to get stamped. You can get it stamped at El Moro and at Castillo San Cristobal. Now, coming in was real quick because we had our annual pass. We didn't have to wait in line. So if you have your annual pass, bring it in. You got to line all by yourself. Thank you. There it is. Time to walk downtown. I don't know which way we should go. I think that way. <laughs> that way and then go that way? Well, I, that way go down the hill? We go down the hill, we'll hit the shops. Okay. We go down that way, there's the other fort way over there. Yeah. That's a long walk. One of the best part of this tour was to get an ice cold Gatorade at the gift store. Yeah, bring a lot of water with you. If you're going to do this walk, you do get quite thirsty, and ice cold drinks is a wonderful thing to have. Oh no! This morning, we've finished two of our five must do's in San Juan. The first one being visit Castillo San Felipe del Moro. Yeah, we just got finished with that. And to see the Raiz Fountain, which we enjoyed immensely. But we're running out of time for this video, so we're going to do a second video to do the next three must do's. And those three are going to be to visit the Cathedral de San Juan Bautista, to see the tomb of Juan Ponce de Leon, and to visit downtown to play with pigeons, drink a pina colada, you know, where the pina colada was invented, take a selfie at the famous Umbrella Street, and do some trinket shopping. Yeah, we got souvenirs we have to hand out. And at the end, we're going to visit Castillo San Cristobal. And that's just going to be a quick trip to get our book stamped. This has been a real fun day so far here in San Juan. Everything is just going right. Yeah, we had to walk up that hill and we sweated to the oldies, but it was enjoyable and what a beautiful island. Now I'm going to continue on with San Juan on my next video. So that's going to be video number two, San Juan. And we're going to do three more must do's. But today, these must-dos were excellent. Now, I want to thank each one of you for, you know, watching these videos. So do me a favor, if you haven't yet, subscribe, hit that notification bell, give me two thumbs up, because this is George the Fiddler Rambler, wishing he was on a cruise again, signing off.